Got a Sony micro component system here. This one was brought in from the same fellow brought me that uh, CD player that had the bad pickup and that we subsequently changed the uh, backlight. This one's got a backlight that's out for the tuner, but the tape decks themselves also need to be checked over. Everything else works on it. Tape decks are the wrong speed and the tuner backlight's out. So let's uh, tackle this one and uh, see if there's anything else wrong with it. Today I have this Sony to uh, take a look at. And, uh, oh, it might help if I turn on my bench power. Now I've been told on here that the only problem is the tuner lights are out. Uh, the, the owner of it doesn't even seem to be that concerned if the tape decks work on it or not. We'll check them out and see if they do. But he's not even that concerned about that. Apparently, he says he thinks they work. It was just the light that he was uh, most concerned about. So let's just see if the tape decks actually work. Turn it on. I don't know what band I'm on here either. Now we know what band I'm on. Pound.com. Quick, accurate, confidential. New on showcase. Alright, I was able to get it tuned down to uh, my test music bakery test transmitter. Let's uh, check out the um, tape deck now. What does SAT do on this one? Super Acoustic Turbo. Ah! Super Acoustic Turbo. In other words, it's a bass boost. These actually have very good sound, by the way. For a portable unit, well, it wasn't really a portable. It was a home unit that you... It had, these were they were wood speakers, wood cabinets with plastic face plates on them, but um, they were basically home components that you could transport. I don't even did this thing run on batteries. I don't even know if these ran on batteries. Some of them did, others did not. I don't think this one did. No, this one here, this one is just a uh, an AC operated unit, and it's actually separate components, right? Unlike some companies that start with J and end with C that just uh, made junk very cheap and uh, made everything look like they were separate components. These actually are separate components. This tuner is separate from the amplifier which is separate from the tape deck. There's three separate components and they're all held together and then this the, the uh, handle goes on there so that you can transport it. Anyway, let's uh, check the, the tape deck out and just see whether the tape decks are working. If I can remember how to open them. How do you open these things up? Stop and jack. That's how you do it. We'll see if the tape decks work. I think he said that they did. I'm putting an old tape in just to make sure, right? Before I, uh, before I um, put a good tape in. Relay play. They're not auto reverse these decks. No, they're just single direction, which is good. They have what they call relay play, so in other words, one when one finishes playing, the other one will play. Speed difference on them. Well, we can fix that. This is kind of an evaluation before I... I'm going to pull the tuner apart and see what, what bulb that uses. It's an incandescent bulb on this. And yes, I, I know I could probably put some LEDs in there and uh, that might be the solution is to throw some some white LEDs in and uh, get that going with LEDs. Or I could go and buy an incandescent bulb for it so that it looks authentic. Many people want the authentic look because they find that LEDs change the color too much. Um, a lot of these LED strips now just are well, even basic LEDs. They don't emulate the exact color that the incandescent bulb did. So there's a lot of a lot of people that want the original incandescent bulb replaced 
just because it has that aesthetics and there's no hot spots. Whereas LEDs, the problem with most light emitting diodes is well, they're directional. So they, they tend to have spots that are brighter than others. And sometimes you can mitigate this by facing them the other way and having them reflect off the reflector in the back. Other times they just don't look right. So we'll see what this has got in here and I'll see what an incandescent bulb will cost. But we'll get into this thing and change the bulb. Uh, the tape decks are working. I'm going to have to set the speed because obviously one's going faster than the other. But that shouldn't be an issue because this one here, I believe, has got two separate motors on it. They're not a single motor design like some of them. Yeah, this is two separate motors on this. Some of the cheaper ones made by companies that start with J and end with C. Well, I shouldn't say just them. Sony did the same thing too. Uh, but some of them had just a single motor that operated both decks. And I don't know how that goes on. Anyway, let's uh, pop the tuner off so I can open it up, see what voltage the lamp is. And uh, then we'll either get a replacement bulb or figure out some LEDs to put in. The handles come off by pushing buttons on here, if I remember. It's been so long since I've worked on one of these things. It's like, are you kidding me? I forget how they work. I know the handle comes off. I push the buttons in and they lift off like that. At least it's got some metal to it. Once the handles are removed, then the speakers can be uh, removed and they just kind of lift up, I think, and pop off like that. Have to disconnect them at the back here. We'll remove the other speaker, then I got to unbolt the, uh, the top and bottom rails here too remove the tuner itself to get it apart. So I'm gonna get their speaker out of here. Tuner lifts off, push the rest of it to the side, and open up the tuner next. As I need to measure the voltage, I don't know whether this is a nine volt bulb or a 12 volt bulb or a six volt bulb. And yes, going to an incandescent bulb is actually going to be more money than LEDs because uh, incandescent bulbs these days, these special, the specialty bulbs as they call them, uh, generally tend to cost a little more than uh, replacement LEDs. Okay, that lifts off like that and we unplug the antenna from the back here. Okay, the lamp lives inside here. This is going to be a relatively easy one, I think, to get at. This whole assembly should just pop out. It holds the lamp. A little clip here, and that should just lift out the back. It should. It should lift out the back. I don't think anything else is holding it in place. It should just swing out from the bottom. Lift out just like this. And there are the little bulbs. That are on here. Let me hook up the power and we're going to just get the meter out and uh, check the voltage on these lamps. So let's just measure across the input coming in from the 22 volts. Twenty-two volts were there and yet nothing on the bulbs. Oh these bulbs are in series that's why. These bulbs are wired in series. They're 12 volt bulbs wired in series. That's what they've done on this one. Yeah, you can see it here. Uh, power comes in. If we follow our, our, we got a 22 volts. So there's a jumper across here, right? There's a jumper across here. This They've done it like this so they could wire this as parallel R series. So we look on here, there's a jumper across this one here, but not, not number two, number four. 22 volts is coming in, it's going across here, it's going through this bulb into this one, right? This is an open connection here, so that it's going around here to this bulb, to that one, and then back. So, if I measure from ground, I got 22 volts. These are 12 volt bulbs, so I go get some new bulbs. Alright, so I got to get some 12 volt bulbs. 
I guess I could put I, I could put a, I don't want to put LED strips in. They'd be way too bright for this thing. That's another thing with LEDs. Yes, I could put I could put a couple dropping resistors in here and put some LEDs in, but I think that LEDs might look a little bit out of place and be a little bit on the bright side. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to head out and go to the uh, the shop that sells vintage light bulbs, and uh, we'll see what uh, what he has. I have another receiver that also needs bulbs that I'm going to be working on, so I'm going to take a voltage measurement on them and pick them up at the same time while I'm out there, so I can go to the shop and uh, pick up some bulbs and make this thing look proper. Picked up some incandescent bulbs to replace uh, the lights in this unit as well as a few other units that I've got in here. These incandescent bulbs are getting harder to find these days and I actually got the last pack that they had at the shop and I don't know whether they're going to get any more or not or whether they're going to phase them out. I guess we'll cross that road when we get there but I do like to use incandescent bulbs to replace incandescent bulbs just because I find that the the actual color temperature looks better and the distribution is a little more even because as you know with LEDs they typically have a hot spot so it's a little more difficult to match LEDs to how the uh, original lights looked. I'm just going to warm up my iron here and we'll get these new lights mounted. These are 12 volt bulbs so they should provide illumination roughly equivalent to what the original ones were and basically these are the same bulbs they've just put uh, some heat shrink around here and some wires so if I were to cut back the heat shrink I would actually have these bare wires but I'll, I'll leave a little bit of, uh, of the wire on here and just attach them in here and stick them down to the circuit board. I'm going to remove some of this insulation. I'll just cut the wire a bit shorter here. We don't need these long wires and what I'll do to remove the insulation is I'll, I'm going to uh, to cut up into the base here a little bit just so that I can separate the wires a little more. Okay next we'll remove the old dead wires or the old dead bulbs. I can use the good old solder sucker on this one. Heat up the wire. I guess I have to clean the tip. It is uh, clogged up there. Okay, now it's clear. Remove the old bulbs. back in just like that. Now we'll connect it up and see how they look. And turn it on. There's the display. That looks good. And there's the two bulbs themselves. See they just light up the back of the display panel. These ones are fairly easy to change. The bulb the bulb in the uh, the CD changer or the CD player that's also part of the system is not quite as easy to change as this one. So let's throw the top cover on this and then we'll open up the cassette decks and get the speed calibrated for the two players because one's playing faster than the other. I love how they just just took the cable and just put it down over the back and it's squeezed in place and then the antenna connector just plugs in like this. Now 
that only goes on one way. Top cover drops on, screws hold it together. There's two screws in the back that you just had to be loosened off. Of course we'll use the drill so that we can be sure to strip them. Now, we'll pull apart the cassette deck to calibrate the speed. Oh, wonderful. The board's on top. We got one deck that's a little bit sharp, and we got one deck that's a little bit flat. So we're going to get these both going the same speed. See that one's a little low. Where's speed? Uh, speed control, here we go. A motor, high and low. And B motor, high and low. Oh, that's excellent. So I don't even need to get into the back of the motor here because I can adjust them right on the board itself. So B, low speed, is R504. What do I need to adjust that? Just a small screwdriver. Let's put this one on B. There we go. And we'll do the A side as well. Oh, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to have to reach into the back here and start to trying to tweak the controls on the motor. They got uh, just square belts on here, as you can see. If I can zoom in, they are not the greatest flywheels in the world, but they're square belts. They're not the flat belts, so the flutter on here is limited by how accurate these little basic flywheels can spin and other factors such as clutches and stuff up here that drive the, uh, the take up and supply spools but it's just one belt that goes around so you can't really do much as far as the wound flutter on here they are what they are it was just a, these are cheap right these were cheap decks the other side is the same I don't think you can see it on here you can see the inside of here Just get your basic dual speed motor with a regular belt. How's the belt look? Is it, is, is it bad or is it good? Let's see here. Ah, the belt feels good. It's not going mushy. So the belt should be okay. And now we've got the unit going the correct speed. This fella should be pretty happy and I can assemble this unit. And uh, so we got the equipment stacked up. Tape deck on the bottom, amplifier in the middle, and cassette deck on the top. We can mount the two mounting rails. And the best way to do this is to uh, not tighten them up initially. Put them on loose. And then tighten them up once you've got all the holes lined up and everything's in place. The plates are interchangeable. They're both the same. They only go on one way. And the speakers reattach. Speakers fit into the groove on the side here and these, these uh, pins lock in place. It might be easier if I just take this off the edge of the bench a bit so I can hook the speaker in. Just like that. Same with the other one. and just like that now both speakers are locked in place and then the main handle 
just snaps in like this. Now the handle's in place and you can pick the unit up and carry around this 40 pound stereo with you. All right, light bulbs replaced and uh, speeds calibrated between them all. There you go, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.